Welcome back to the Run for Oak Hills podcast. I'm here with Tyler Woodward, the head PGA professional at Jimmy Austin Golf Club in in preparation for our tournament coming up. Uh, Tyler, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Yeah, you bet. Glad glad, uh, to be on here and and look forward to the event here uh, in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Well, first, Tyler, can you just tell us a little bit about the history of Jimmy Austin? Yeah, you know, it's... uh, it's a it's a quite a unique property. Um, we're we're about a mile from uh, Owen Field, uh, the Gaylord Memorial Stadium. So we're right on campus. Uh, we're the host facility um, for our men's and women's uh, golf teams. Uh, they have their own facility on the south end of our range, uh, and we we work very closely with them uh, year in year out uh, on whenever it comes to recruiting to uh, club repair, design, fitting. Um, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but this, this place started out as a, as a naval air base. Uh, it was built in 1951. Uh, it's a Perry Maxwell original design, uh, which we're, we're very proud of that. Obviously, Perry Maxwell here in the state of Oklahoma and, and around the central United States is a well-known golf course architect, uh, Southern Hills, Twin Hills. There's a, there's a list of, of those that uh, he, he had his hand on. Um, but yeah, it was a naval air base, uh, officer's base for um, the U.S. Navy back in the day. Um, this was referred to as South Base. Uh, North Base is West Timer Airport. Um, so it was a Naval Air Base. The Officers Club was actually out closer to our fourth green. Um, the clubhouse and everything was set up there. Uh, and, and so whenever, after uh, a certain period of time in, in the uh, late 70s, it was donated to the University of Oklahoma, all of the land. Um, and and it's, been, it's been quite a run since then. Uh, we, we had a major redesign in 1996 by Robert Cup. Uh, which was kind of trying to get the golf course a little bit more into the type of shape that as the game progressed, um, you know, to kind of change it up a little bit. Uh, and then we just went through a major redesign uh, in 2015 to about 2017. Um, again, extending the golf course out, creating that, that length that is required for a, a championship golf course, and then just kind of making some changes to some holes. Um, all Zoysia tee boxes, uh, redid all of our bunkers, uh, all of our approaches. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been quite the, quite the process here in the last few years. Awesome. Well, Jimmy Austin has hosted NCAA regional championships six different times, as well as big 12 women's championship events. Why is this golf course such a regular host for NCAA championships besides the fact that it's the home course for Oklahoma university? Yeah, it's it's one of those things, uh, relationships that started originally with the uh, with the Big Twelve, um, and then we we were the host of the USGA Men's Public Links in two thousand nine, um, and then we parlayed that with the Women's Public Links in twenty thirteen, um, and in in championship golf, um, as a lot of people know, once you kind of get the reputation of not only a great golf facility and, and golf course. Um, but somebody that, that is easy and eager to host championships, um, that, that spreads quickly um, in the sense that a lot of those committees want to go to places that they know whenever they come in, it will be the best championship uh, that they can host. Um, we started with, with, the, with the Women's Big 12, and then we kind of started to, to put in bids for the NCAA regionals. Um, it's a great way for us to help, uh, you know, Coach Hibble, Coach uh, Drew and Luttrell, um, Veronique is, is our ladies coach. Um, you know, there's nothing better than playing a regional at your home course. Um, there's a lot of pressure that goes with it, but it's also one of those things to where, you know, our 2019 national championship run with the men, um, they, had, they won Big 12s at Southern Hills. They won the regional here. Uh, so they never left the state of Oklahoma before going on to win the national championship. Mm. That's something we as a staff love. Um, we, we, you know, that's kind of gets all of us excited here at the club whenever we host large championships or, you know, like the regionals. Um, and then again, it, it helps, it helps with recruiting. It helps with all aspects of it, but we, we do make a big concerted effort to say, Hey, that's why we're here um, for our membership, but also to, to bring those kind of championships into Norman. So as I was going through the golf course, kind of just looking at the different holes and how everyone was going to play it, I did notice that actually each hole has a unique name. Like number two is nicknamed the dance floor. Number 11 is the shoot to illusion. What's the significance of these names? Well, it's, it's kind of funny. So I, I got here in 2004. So this is my 17th season here. Uh, I've been the head pro for just over 10 years. Uh, they've been, the names have been around for a long time. 
Um, and and it, it kind of, you know, extended from the early ties to Perry Maxwell. Um, you know, we had we had some some uh, one of our old golf coaches that helped in, in naming a lot of it. It just kind of, you know, like all great golf courses, it's fun to to come up with kind of these ideas and, and, and the styles of, of holes. You know, at Augusta, you have every hole has a different story based on the name. Um, here, here at Jimmy Austin, you know, it's, it's one of those things to where as the golf course continues to get better and better and, and grow in, in age, not only, but just in, in definition and, and, and what we try to do hosting championships, we, we like to have a little bit of that aura as well. Um, so there are, there's, there, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of good ones to dance for number two. It's a, it's a challenging shot. It's a hundred, you know, from, from the championship tees, it's 185 yard par three surrounded by bunkers that you really don't want to be in. And Bishop Creek, the Creek that runs throughout our property um, cuts in front of you and lets you know, it's there. Um, you, you hit it, you hit it to the right, you're in it, you hit it long, you're in it. Um, so, you know, it, it's a little bit of that style of a dance forward, like, if you hit it, it's a very easy, bird, you know, or accessible birdie, but best of luck if you don't. Um, so it's kind of, kind of a neat deal. Um, 15 it kind of go, speaks for itself. It's called run it on, uh, from the men's public links championship. Uh, our, our, in, our, our champion, Brad Benjamin, um, actually beat Nick Taylor. Who's, who's had quite the career so far on the tour. Uh, it was a 293 yard par three and, and it literally, wow. he ran it on with his driver. Uh, Brad did to about a foot. Um, so, you know, just kind of a cool, cool aspect, something to kind of tie in, gives you a little hints into what, what, you know, you want to do. Uh, and, and also some of them give you some hints of what you don't want to do. That's awesome. That's really cool, actually. So yeah. let's just go through quickly, do a brief kind of course overview. I've kind of sectioned the course off into my personal different stretches that I saw, but I'd love to hear your opinion on this. I honestly think that the first hole is kind of like a hole of its own because it kind of goes against what the rest of the front nine does. Ridiculously long par four coming south. What, what is the significance of kind of this first massive hole right out of the gate? Yeah, it, you know, this is, this is something that um, back in 2004, our, our nines were actually flipped. Um, and so, you know, it used to be number 10 and, and it truly was one of those um, that you you just, you know, and it still is, um, you know, you make a par and you just move on. Um, it is it is a, one of the most challenging holes out here. And, and I think whenever whenever we went through about, about 14 years ago uh, is whenever we flipped them and, and it's been probably the best thing that we've done. You know, it, it kicks you right in the mouth early. Um, and, and there's a lot of great golf clubs that that happens. Uh, I think of, you know, Pete Dye's Oak Tree National just up to our north up in Edmond. Same sort of deal. You, you need to be ready to go from the beginning. Um, there's there's going to be a few holes throughout the golf course that we'll talk about that, you know, give you a little bit of a, a breather. Um, you know, you, you can still make a number on them, but if you if you hit some good shots, you, you're rewarded for it. But number one is, I mean, we're predominantly a Southland golf course. Um, and from the back, I mean, you're talking you're talking at almost a 500 yard par four uh, that can play, you know, it can play really, really long. We've got a great bunker that's in the landing area. Um, so if you if you ease too far to the left, trying to avoid some of the trees on the right, you, you're going to make you a five real quickly. Um, so it is that's it, you, you hit it right on the head. It, uh, what a challenge to start you off um, can, you know, make a par, make a birdie. It can really spur on to a good round, but you can make that big number pretty quickly and, and get get going in the wrong direction. I've labeled the next stretch of holes two through seven kind of simple and strategic. They're not necessarily complicated holes, a few dog legs, mainly straight, but they're not ones you want to really sleep on. Where do you expect the scoring to come from in probably two through seven? Yeah, number three is is one that probably is talked about the most. Um, you know, not not the most challenging at 331, um, but a big two-tiered green, um, large large hump in the middle of the green, uh, so you get a left or a right pin placement, and, and everything is pretty much, you know, from that point is is set up by the tee ball. Um, if you have a left pin placement, and you're on the right side. There's a large middle middle center bunker that's green side that can can play a little bit of a challenge with a downhill landing um but it's it's also one of those again i mean those there's we'll see a lot of birdies there um from from some of the field and we'll also see you know some fives and sixes and and, and those are the ones that hurt uh going from there 
great uphill climb on four, um, hit, hit the tee ball well on four and five, you're able to, you know, have, have a chance to score. Uh, five's a great par five, again, back into kind of the teeth of the south wind. Um, six, Cross Creek, par three. Um, depending on where the pin placement is, again, top tier on the left, uh, challenges a lot of golfers, uh, tempts them to go at the pin. You hit it left into the green side bunkers, you're just dead. Um, and then and then kind of capping it off with seven. You finally, it's your first reprieve from a south wind. Uh, downwheel, downwind par four. A um, lot of lot of mature trees on the left and the right side. Um, the, the the Jimmy Austin logo uh, is actually a fur oak leaf, um, and we have on number seven the largest fur oak in the state of Oklahoma, uh, which we kind of have tucked away uh, right side of the fairway, and, and it's it's pretty special over there. Uh, but again, mature trees everywhere on seven, so hitting hitting the fairway is a must, and then from there, you know, it's gettable. Eight and ele- eight through eleven, I feel like things kind of open up a little bit. It's a par five with three straight par fours that are pretty short, honestly, especially number ten. But especially the fairway kind of gives you some opportunity. Is this a turning point for some tournaments? How the score can go through this section at the turn? Yeah, I think number eight, um, probably probably my favorite par five on our golf course. Um, obviously, downwind par fives are going to be going to be liked by most. Um, but it is. It's it's got enough of a challenge. Uh, a lot of cross bunkers for in the landing zone for a layup, um, you know. But very very reachable in two from the back tee uh, with a, with a good tee ball. The placement of again, we're kind of a placement golf course. We have plenty of length uh, with the ability to get to about 7,600 yards. Um, we don't get there very often, um, but we did for like the USJ events. Um, but you know, number eight, if you keep it up the left side. There's a, there's a large cottonwood tree that you kind of avoid on the right that you're able to get there. Um, you know, hybrid long iron um, with a with a well struck drive you can get there in two. Number nine's a tricky one. Um, you know, from the back tees, it's it's playing 435. Um, it is downwind, but there's a lot of bunkers up the left side. Kind of tightens in the landing area. Challenges the guy uh, if he's going to hit driver. It needs to be a really good. One. You get into those some of those bunkers and you can you can find a five pretty quickly. Uh, just like hitting it to the right into the into Bishop Creek, uh, the the play there is typically you know less than driver, um, but it, it can leave you 170 to 185 yard shot coming into an elevated green. You go to 10, which was the original number one, and the thing I love about it being 10 now, um, it does it gives you a little bit, uh, a little bit of a reprieve, a little bit of a break, um, but it can it can come up and bite you. Uh, you know, it's a we have a, a creek that leads down the left side. Um, that you know, with a with a poorly struck tee ball, it finds everything kind of works its way over there. Um, but yeah, no, it's it definitely that that run between there, eleven. We the only large body of water, uh, kind of a lake off of the right side of it. Um, it it's one of those based on the pin placement. Uh, it can be a challenge, but eight through eleven, I think you're hitting it on the head. That that's the time to go ahead and press a little uh, and try to get try to make some birdies. Exactly, because when you get to 12, things get really tight, especially 12 through 14, everything narrows up. Specifically, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this 12 green. Almost, it looks like a figure eight. It's so skinny, but can I talk about these holes a little bit? Where do the challenges come through in 12 through 14? Yeah, so number 12 is is part of the redesign in 17. Uh, The green stayed the same, uh, but the tee boxes moved completely. Um, It used to be, uh, a little bit further towards the south, and you were, you were actually hitting over all the bunkers. Now we've got the tee boxes to the to the north of, of number 11 green, and you have a great look at that figure eight green. Uh, and it seems like, hey, this should be just a pretty straightforward shot. Predominant wind, right to left, um, real deep, difficult bunkers, right green side. Um, so typically the, the play is you aim right on the edge of the bunkers, and you you know hope to have the wind or a little draw pull it back to the middle. Um, but it is. It's it's one of the one of the least hit greens I would say in competition. Um, what you know, the back pin, back left pin placement's a, a challenge up on a shelf. Um, if you know, one of the days we'll catch one of the front pins and, and it'll be it'll be one of the easier holes, um, or it should be. But you, you come up short, false front that runs almost down to Bishop Creek. You miss it to the right. You're in a deep bunker, really struggling to get it up and down. Um, so it is. It's it's a it's a great one. Um, and then, and then you move on to a great par five. You know, you talk about length uh, in this day and age. We go, we go 594 into the south wind. 
Um, and it, it is a challenge on number 13. Um, it, with a good tee ball, there's a creek about, from that tee, there's, it's about 360, 370 out. Um, so it's not reachable to get to that creek. Um, but from there, leaves you, you know, with a 300 yard drive, leaves you a long ways still in, 295 in. Um, so most of these guys, um, you know, that, that'll be that'll be the challenge. Hitch, hitch your good tee ball in the middle, then you kind of make a decision. Do I want to go with go with a three wood and try to knock it up there close, or lay it up to a number? A um, lot of lot of elevated greens, um, kind of in this stretch. Number twelve is an elevated green. Number thirteen obviously is an elevated kind of climbing up. But after the second half of the hole, um, and then and, and everything is it's well protected by by some pretty gnarly native style bunkers. And we already kind of mentioned 15 a little bit, the massive part three, but honestly, 15 to the end is where things just go super long, especially 17 is playing around 480 a little bit. How are players going to have to manage these last stretch of holes, specifically 15 to the end? Yeah, 15 is, it's a it's a great part three. Um, it's all in front of you. Um, there, there is a creek that kind of runs up the left side, not really in play with a poor shot, it can be in play. Um, but just a challenging large square footage green. 14 is a big green as well. Those are actually the two biggest greens on the golf course. Um, so 15, you can you can hit a tee, tee shot and be on the green in regulation and really have a challenging two putt to uh, to make your par. Uh, you go straight straight into 16. Great little kind of up and over dog leg to the right. Back into the south wind doesn't doesn't tend to play as into the wind. Um, you know, the second shot is, is, is a downhill kind of second shot, dog leg right. Um, so kind of kind of neutralizes that wind out, plays about true to the number. Um, but yeah, then you step onto 17, you walk off of 16 and you, you don't go back to the north uh, to the tee box, you just go straight to the west because uh, the tee box is actually pretty much pin high uh, with 16 green. And it is, it's even though it, it's, you normally have a south wind to your back, long long shot um you know a little bit intimidating of one with a creek up the right side uh native all up the left um and some some crazy bunkers up the left side as well it's this is where you really can see around um you know kind of materialize or or kind of go away um towards the end uh because 18 is a great par five um downwind for the for the t-ball dog legs left over over bishop creek and, and some large trees up kind of by the green that really make you question okay lay it up or, or hit hit that you know try to hit a high hybrid or, or fairway metal up over the top of it um you know it's 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 one of the reasons why i'm so passionate about the flipping of our nines 15 14 or 15 years ago because i think there's no better finishing hole um around uh i think you start it, it's almost that climb you start very challenging with number one and it just flows really nicely throughout with a little bit of reprieve in the middle and then kind of finishes with that you know if you if you hit a good good tee ball there's nothing better than somebody having a chance to, to get on it too and make an eagle uh, to make a big push yeah and i definitely agree one of the greatest finishing stretch of holes we have in this summer series and again tyler thank you for joining me today i do have one last question for you with the current conditions you think the golf course is in what do you expect our winning score to be out of a three-day tournament where are you expecting our finalists to be you know, it's 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 always a that's always the question that we get, uh, and it, and it kind of depends on, you know, based on based on our timing. Obviously, normally July is going to be pretty warm. Um, we get we get the greens going in, in a in a way. Cody Elwood, our, our senior agronomist, is incredible and and, and truly a, a bent grass guy. Um, we we had our state uh, stroke play a couple of weeks ago. Um, out of 140 competitors, we had seven shoot under par. Um, and granted, different different style of golf, uh, a lot of a lot of mid ams in that, and, but some really good collegiate players. We actually had uh, out of the top five, three of them were the OU players. Uh, Jake Holbrook actually won. Uh, he, he shot uh, five under, and then it was it was rain rain reduced just to two rounds. Uh, five under the first day, and I think he shot four the next. So a little home home course advantage. I I could see it being uh, not not knowing the field uh, or seeing a list of players. You know, if somebody comes out here and, and, and shoots, you know, three rounds in the 60s, uh, whether it be 68, 69, somewhere in there, anything in the red is going to be good. Um, the golf course is in great shape. Um, we've had obviously some crazy times. We've had a lot of rain here in Oklahoma, more than normal uh, in June. Uh, but we're kind of getting into that good 
warm season. Our Bermuda is going crazy. We're, I think those guys are mowing, it seems like every day. Um, but a challenging golf course, I, you know, I, I think in a three round total, if somebody's anywhere around 207, 208, I think they'd be doing pretty good. Uh, you know, just, just keeping it consistent avoid those big numbers and, and take your, take your chances whenever you have it. Well, we definitely look forward to coming out there. Tyler, thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you up in a few weeks. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you guys so much.